Hey, my wife and I had a pretty normal marriage. No kids. Both employed and really happy together. For 99% of our relationship, we didn't have any major problems. We made time for each other, so on and so forth. She recently went away with her friend for a girl's trip. The first two days after she came back, everything was fine. And on the third, we went to dinner with this friend and her boyfriend. Dinner went well, came home and went to bed. Wife woke me up in the middle of the night crying saying there was something she had to tell me. Long story short, she had cheated on me the entire trip, and her friend had cheated on her boyfriend as well. Apparently the dinner together caused her to have an attack of conscience because she messaged my wife after I had fallen asleep, telling her that she was going to come clean to her partner, and my wife had to tell me as well, or she would. We talked, yelled, cried. I spent most of the night sick told me it was just a horribly stupid decision and was perfectly happy with me, which honestly makes it worse. Why risk a happy marriage for an affair? It wasn't my fault. The usual. I've been staying at my sister's place while we figure out the divorce. Before this went down, she had been scheduled for tests and scans for what we thought were relatively non-serious health problems. Turns out we were wrong, as I was just contacted last week by her cousin telling me a scan revealed cancer. I got in touch with my wife and we talked. She proved her diagnosis and filled me in on some details. She was understandably terrified and begged me to come back, to talk to her, hug her, give her a chance, to be there with her. I told her I wished her all the best. I'm very sorry for what she's going through and know she's strong enough to make it through. But while I'd help financially from a distance, I wasn't physically going back. They, not her, have been harassing me, telling me to man up and go to her. My own friends are split 50, 50, I don't want to go back. Before anyone pulls that this is probably why she cheated. Card? No. We had a good marriage. We had a sit-down talk every month to discuss anything wrong. We were solid. She just chose to take a chance on a quick thrill, despite knowing cheating is a 100% deal-breaker for me. She never even planned to tell me until her friend forced her. While I certainly don't think anyone deserves this, and I'm sorry it happened to her, in my opinion her diagnosis doesn't change our situation. I feel it'll be harder on both of us with me being there knowing I won't forgive her when it's over. It feels like prolonging the inevitable, and I feel like my obligation to her ended when she chose to betray our marriage. She has family and friends, so she isn't alone. I care about the woman I thought I married, but I no longer love who she turned out to be, so I feel it'd be unfair to both of us for me to be there. I'm not trying to punish her. My heart just isn't in it anymore. Am I D.A. whole? edit to the reddit detectives further down when i said we talk every month about our problems it doesn't mean we only talk once a month in strict time slots we talked as often as needed but made a point at least once a month to sit with each other and check in see how we're feeling and so on secondly i mentioned she proved her diagnosis because when i was told i didn't believe it i figured it was a ploy to get me to come over and talk because she and her family had been trying to get me to reconsider from the moment i left I also didn't want numerous answers to be filled with that exact same speculation. I knew her friend forced her to tell me because I demanded to see their messages after she told me she cheated. Finally, I know a lot of people post made-up stories. I'm not one of those people, but short of providing personal details, I can't prove it. If I wanted karma, I wouldn't be on a throwaway. I posted here because when some of your own friends are telling me I'm not a good person, I'm not a good person. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't worry about you, my family. Run away. What can you start? Acting like a romantic partner to someone you could never truly forgive is just prolonging the inevitable, and that it doesn't make sense for you to get back together with her if you do not love her anymore. Choices like that should never be made out of obligation. However, there are degrees of support you could offer that do not amount to getting back together. And I wonder if you will regret detaching yourself completely if this decision is primarily motivated by resentment. You say you care about the woman you thought you married, but don't love who she turned out to be. She did not wake up one day as a completely different person. The same person you married also made a horrible mistake and cheated on you. This same person is now also facing a terrifying future. For your own happiness, I think it would help if you tried to view her infidelity and her diagnosis, in light of your entire history with her, 
instead of seeing her mistake as the only real aspect of your relationship. You do not need to, and probably should not, get back together with her. But is it possible you are willfully detaching yourself from the ability to be empathetic toward her? If so, these suppressed emotions might come back to bite you later. I am sorry for what you're going through. As long as you don't take the opportunity to rub her nose and stuff and be vitriolic, you're not the a-hole. There's plenty of people that would handle this differently, but not everyone is built the same. So that's not a defect on your heart. One point that I agree with some of the heavily downbooted folks in this thread on, the downboat button is for people who don't contribute to the discussion. It's not a disagree button you may hold. Is that how you treat others as a reflection on you or as a person, regardless of what they've done? What they have done is a reflection of who they are. For your own sake, take a moment to ponder what things would be like if she ends up dying from the sickness six months from now. Are you going to be satisfied living the rest of your life with the decisions that you have made? Because once she has died, there's no going back, apologizing and making up for it. You don't want to be left thinking less of yourself in hindsight for decades for your actions and a time of great pain for yourself. Let me be very clear. I am not suggesting in any way that I think anything that you have done is the wrong thing. I'm just recognizing that so much of what's involved here is subjective and based on emotions, what you can live with and what she can live with isn't something someone else can tell you or judge you for. And it may be the opposite thing that others would do in your place. That doesn't mean they are wrong either. It just means that they are different people. I see you say that you won't forgive her when it's over. That isn't something that you owe her, regardless of whatever else has slashes happening to her. If I can be so bold as to suggest it, I'd like to remind you that forgiveness is done for the benefit of the forgive or not the forgiven. You can forgive her without forgetting and without staying connected. It's just not good for you to hold on to that pain and hatred so tightly. You cannot pick up something good if you refuse to put down the something bad you've got clenched in your hands.